Today we have the greatest little miniature of them all. Another Reaper figure from the Dungeon Dweller series, and we have a Halfling, which we are going to be painting like Bilbo Baggins for obvious reasons. Yes, what I lack in creativity, I make up for by being extremely predictable. The inspiration for the color scheme for this miniature, actually I went to the Hobbit movie, not the one you're thinking, I went to the Rankin Bass film, and we're going to be copying the colors from that. So we have a very yellow and a very green color scheme. Checking out screenshots online, you get a wide variety because this is from some, uh, how old was this movie, 40 years or something now? Uh, but yeah, a lot of different color corrections by uh, people who have uploaded screenshots from the movie. So decided to go for a slightly pale yellow tone for the tunic rather than a very bright yellow. For the cloak, we're going to have a little bit of fun here and add a little bit of texture, but first we need to get down the dark green base coat and then a little bit of a black, kind of a wash, placed in the recesses to add a little bit of shade. From there we can start adding our texture and all I'm doing is painting little lines basically. So just adding a little bit of texture to the cloak just to make it a little bit more interesting rather than a plain flat pattern. So our paint's a little bit thicker and you can just see we're making horizontal lines and we're going to do a couple highlights and build up upon those lines. Now for the hood and shoulder area of the cloak, we're still going to paint that green, uh, but we're going to go a little bit lighter with it, but we're using the same colors. Instead of starting with the dark green, we are starting off with a uniform green. We're going to add pale yellow to that, and then eventually just a little bit of white for the edging. You 
using two different shades of green here allows us to make the cloak more interesting without resorting to adding a completely new color to the scheme. So we still have our green and yellow, but looks a lot better than just having that same dark green all over the cloak. Now the Rankin Bass Bilbo doesn't wear gloves, so we have to come up with a new color to add to the paint scheme here to cover for that. And we're going to go with brown because that's an obvious, very neutral, natural color to use. Now here you may notice I'm painting the pants the same color and I realized I got that wrong. I had to go back and paint them green using the same colors that we used on the top of the cloak, which is actually gonna be a benefit as we get a little bit further on on this project. For the face, we want something cherubic, you know, happy little hobbit. So we're using a red base to get kind of that natural rosy cheek look. Uh, the face on this figure is well sculpted, but it's kind of creepy doll-ish with a really jutting cheeks and kind of a scowl to them. Uh, it's very interesting. Let's put it that way. We still need a bit more rosy in his cheek, so we are applying a glaze of gory red to thin coats. A little bit on the cheek area, also a little bit in the recessed areas of the face, so we get that nice warmth to his face. From the color-corrected picks, 
I wasn't too sure if Bilbo from that movie is supposed to have red hair or more brown hair. I decided to go something more in the middle, keep it towards a little orange with a, just a little bit of red in it. And here is where me fixing the color on the pants actually helped out a lot because now we have brown on the feet, we have brown on the top of his head, and we have the brown gloves. And having the brown pants as well would have been just, well, too much brown. So actually fixing that helped me decide on what color to do the hair because otherwise I would have had to make it radically different so the hair didn't look like the leather gloves or the pants. Lucky me. Rather than going for a super glowy sting sword, decided to keep it more subtle and stick with metallics. Because I'm kind of painting these as an adventure party with the rest of the figures I'm doing this month, I didn't want to use non-metal metallics because it wouldn't match the metallics I'm using on the other figures. So instead, we're sticking with the metallics and just adding a little bit of a blue wash in the recesses over gunmetal. And then we're going to add a little bit of light blue just to give it, give it a little sparkle on the other side. So it just has a subtle a little bit more extra sheen to it than the other figures in the line. And again, for a little bit of that sheen, sky blue added, and then just blending it in with a few coats of silver to the rest of the blade, and that about does it. And there is our non-Bilbo figure, all painted and looking kind of mean, actually. I really like how the cloak came out, and it's extremely easy to do. Just very short brush strokes, all done in horizontal lines, couple layers repeated over each other. And it really adds something to the cloak uh, without getting too complex, doing some freehand pattern or something like that. So that's about it. I really don't have a whole lot to say about this project since I was just copying a paint scheme online. The only thing I had to change was the gloves and come up with color with that and brown is a natural color because it's very neutral and it works very well with the green and the yellow. Fortunately, this figure was a very good match for the Rankin Bass Bilbo. Uh, sometimes when you're trying to copy a paint scheme from a completely different genre, like trying to paint a space marine as Boba Fett, it doesn't necessarily work because the figures are completely different, but this one was a good match, and it came out pretty well, I think. So that's it. Thanks for watching. You are both walking on a Tremidabalian footbridge when you run across a fourth-level Balrog. What do you do?